Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to start talking about uh, models on Keras. Okay, so I'm just going to save this file. Uh, let me save on my desktop Keras. I'm going to call it linear because today I'm going to show you guys how to solve a linear problem using Keras. So a linear problem would be something that we have it's like a linear function, okay? So the most basic linear function is addition, okay? So you could just imagine um, a line being drawn on a uh, paper or something like that, and that would be a linear function, okay? Something that has a line to separate things. So let's start by importing uh, a model from Keras. I'm going to import the sequential model, which is uh, the basics of Keras, okay, to build a model. Let's import the dense layer, which is the most basic layer. Is it a, is a, is it a, it is a fully connected layer, okay? So now let's talk about the data set or data set that we're going to talk about, or actually we're going to create. So, I'm going to create a data set which will be able to perform uh, addiction, okay? So we're going to input x, uh, x, okay, which would be number one. x will be equal uh, number one and plus number two. So the the data set would be pretty much this. We're going to work with NumPy, so we're going to import NumPy to create NumPy arrays, okay? So Let's create a data set. So X would be our data set. We're gonna create a array object. Uh, let's create a, an array of arrays. So the entire array would be our data set and each individual array will be our samples. Okay, so we're gonna have an array of samples. So the first sample would be the addition of two numbers, actually two numbers and the at Y would be our target. So these are this is uh, this is the input features of vectors, okay? And uh, y would be our target values or uh, labels, okay? So um, let's just start by um, creating some creating some samples. I'm going to create some numbers, for instance, we're going to create 0 and 0. So each sample will have two numbers, okay? So 0 and 0 will be our input values. The target or the output value would be the sum of these two numbers, which is, in this case, 0, okay? So the input would be two numbers, the output would be one number, okay? So let's another, add another sample, um, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, which be equal as 0 0.5, okay? And the last one would be um, 0 0.45 and 0 0.2, which will be equal to 0 0.65, okay? So, these are our sample data, okay? I'm just gonna give these three samples and probably we're gonna be able to learn these parameters and be able to make uh, predictions on new data. So, the thing is, as you guys may have noticed, uh, we are only able to predict the addition of two numbers. Uh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna use a scale from zero to one, okay? So if you guys need to work on another scale you guys need to find a way to do that so this is called normalization by the way okay so let's create our model which be a sequential model and let's add just two uh, layers okay so uh, each uh, I'm just zooming in a little bit so each uh, I'm gonna add more lines to okay so let's add a layer we have a dense layer. We're gonna add a dense layer. So the thing is that each dense layer has two parameters. So 
the first parameter is the number of output neurons okay in this case I only have one okay each uh, this model each sample has one parameter or one output and we have in because this is the first uh, neuron it happens to to be the first neuron, we're going to, need to define the input dimensions or the input number, which is two. Okay, as you guys can see, we have two numbers for each sample. So, uh, you just need to pass the activation function, which you're going to discuss later. Just pass ReLU and you are good to go. Okay, ReLU is a very famous activation function nowadays. So, let me see right here if you are not forgetting nothing. So the first thing you're gonna call is model.compile. We're gonna pass the optimizer. This will convert uh, this model to our backend equivalent. Okay. In this case, I'm gonna using I'm using TensorFlow. The loss will be our loss function. I'm gonna use mean squared error. The metrics, which will show us the accuracy, we're gonna use ACC, which stands for accuracy. So the last thing, just we're gonna call model.fit. Uh, X, Y, the number of epochs, I'm going to pass 3,000, and let's save it and execute, okay, so I'm going to let execute right here, and let's, co let's come back, so as you guys can see, we have this model, okay, which is uh, learning the sum of two numbers, because we are using real function, a real activation function, we are able to predict uh, higher numbers. Uh, we don't need as exceptionally to give numbers between the range uh, starting from zero to one. Okay, we can give it a higher number, numbers which are higher than zero because the real function works that way. And you guys will learn more about this later. Okay, so it's taking quite a while. That's uh, very common because TensorFlow needs some time to load. Uh, as you guys may notice, we have the some information right here, which I'm going to discuss later, to give you guys a better understanding of how this works. So let me see. Okay, the loss is very low right now, which means that we have learned that function. Okay, so it had finished. So right here you have you guys can see epoch which shows the actual the current epoch. This is the number of samples. Okay, we have three samples. Let's come back. We have exactly three samples. So this is called a batch because we don't have specify a batch. The the number of batch would be the entire data set. So we have the time to run each epoch and the time to run each step. Step is basically show a batch to the to this transition flow. We have the loss, which is the how far we are from the actual output. In this case is a very low number, which is good, which uh, which means that we have learned this data set. The accuracy shows how how we are performing on the prediction side or the prediction task. But in this case, this is it always correct okay so one uh, simple thing one last thing we're gonna do is to print the prediction on the X data set and we're gonna predict our Z okay which will be our actual capital X will be our data set let's create a um, array okay in this array I'm gonna pass two numbers actually let's create let's create a validation data set so I'm going to pass, uh, let me see, 0 0.3 and 0 0.3, which, sh which should be equal to 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5, which be should be equal to uh, 0 0.9, and 12, 12, and uh, 15, which should be equal to 27. So, the last thing we're going to do is to uh, print the prediction to, <laughs> I call it here fit, which is completely wrong. So we're going to show the predictions to X and we're going to compare. Okay. So what I could do though, 
Let me see. Mm, okay. Oh, okay, we're gonna need to create a Y. And you guys will see it later on. So in the Y, we're gonna just put the the outputs. Okay, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and 27. I'm gonna create a function right here. Okay, let's just call Z, which be equal to this. Let's call for I, G, K, and zip, um, X. Actually, we don't need to do that. Just I, G, and zip, um, Y, Z. Okay, I'm gonna print, um, let me see. Okay, that way, I think it's good, right? Uh, let me see the thing. Last thing I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's execute this and I'm gonna see if it has worked. Okay, it is. If it is working, I hope so. So the loss is pretty low, as you guys can see. And where I've I've had add some samples and some validation data set right here. So we should be able to uh, check check if we are. Uh, if we have learned the data set. So let's go ahead and check that out. So in a few minutes, I'm going to see if we have done that. Okay, so, okay, as you guys can see, we have uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and the output seems to be zero, which I don't know why. I, mean, I need to come back and try to see what we did wrong. So let me see. Okay. Let's try to run with just 100 epochs. Uh, so this time I'm going to have to debug this code. Yeah, now it's okay. So let's execute with 3000. And I think this time it will work uh, normally. So uh, if you guys have any doubt, uh, on this how this works you guys should definitely comment down below and if you have any trouble or if concerns with regarding to installing Keras or tensorflow i sh i could i think i am able to help you guys out if you have any trouble with that so to finish this video i'm just gonna show you guys the results and and the next video i'm gonna learn more about deep learning okay so yeah it's showing me this which is not it's not exactly what I was expect, expecting so I think we're gonna need to change the activation function to sigmoid and because of that this will not be valid anymore so I need to change this I'm gonna ch change this to zero because one plus zero is equal zero and I think that's uh, correct uh, now because I think the error was because of the relo activation function okay I think uh, there was a bug I think we cannot add just one activation function within that activation function happens to be a relo activation function maybe it's because of that but I'm not sure enough I, I don't I'm not sure I'm not I don't have how can I say that? I don't have confidence enough that that was the issue, but I hope so. So, uh, okay. So the sigma detection function seems to be very slow compared to the relu, and the softmax function is the slow, slowest activation function. Okay, if you guys have uh, thought of that that before. So, um, it seems to me, yeah, I see, I see what, let me see. Okay, we have a low loss, okay, but it seems to me that the model hasn't learned. So, I'm going to finish this video right here, guys, and the next video I'm going to dive in more this model, okay, and we're going to explore more. 
I hope you guys like and see you guys next time. So don't forget to subscribe and see you guys next time.